Praise God, 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 praise God. Hallelujah. Ah. We thank God for this morning. And I know Pensa. Whilst you were singing and dancing and all those things, I didn't see any paper. I've been told I have one hour. Your time is 8.47. So I'm going to consume my one hour. So there should be no paper. <laughs> I think you don't understand what I mean. Uh, when you were dancing, there was no paper. So until my one hour is exhausted, no paper. Hallelujah. At that time, this place was such a forest. And one of our brothers called Kwame Kwachi, and a few of us, wanted a place to pray. And if my memory serves me right, I think Kwame Kwachi first came here and then we joined. And those days, the time we came on this field to pray, you could f Kwame Kwachi came first, but before we joined, he gave us the impression that when you are here praying, you, you feel like they are stoning you. This place was demon infested. I recall in those days, there was a bypass, I don't know whether it's still there, at down the vice chancellor's residence. And there was a particular spot. We used to go to church at Apeusika. And in the darkness of the night, when I walk with my torchlight, I get to a particular point and the um, the touch will go up. The battery will die. Yeah, the, the bulb will die. Ah, I, again, it will happen. The same, the same spot. So I decided that no, this thing I'm going to cabolize it. So I recall, <laughs> I intentionally went to buy, and this time I said this bulb, I soak it in the blood of Jesus. You know those days. And then I intentionally walked. When I got to that point, I wanted to see. But this time I passed. There was no light off. <laughs> and as I, as I recollected those lovely memories and how we used to come here and pray, Pensa, and I was wondering how no other organization got this place as a place of worship but Pensa. When I heard that that place is too small for you and that you are meeting here, that was amazing. When we started Pensa UCC, we were just eight with one lady. The first day we met, from nowhere, we just looked at ourselves and said, you, your face looks like president. You are going to be president. Your face looks like vice. So we just shared. Everybody got positioned that day. We were eight of us. When eight of us met, the first day we met, everybody got a post. I also got one anyway. And I'm happy to announce to you that when I was here, I was in the only hall in UCC. Do you know the hall? Which, which hall? Oh, all the rest were dormitories. <laughs> uh, so if you, if you don't belong to my hall, oh, the rest, yeah. I was in the only hall in UCC. And that is Casford. <laughs> <laughs> all the rest uh, will go Atlantic, they are all dormitories. What a joy to be back. Shall we rise for a minute? And as you rise, let the atmosphere change. Let the atmosphere change. 
Now I want you to let God recognize that you are here. May the Lord mention your name. Don't be missed out. Let the Lord mention your name and recognize that you are here. And tell God not to pass you by. You do not want to miss this opportunity. And that somehow he should mention your name. Father, we thank you for this morning. We take authority over this ground and we take authority over every heart and over every mind. And we ask that your lordship be established in every heart, every body, soul, and spirit. I call this done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please be seated. I've been asked to speak on the theme empowered for exploits. Am I right? Empowered for exploits. And I was given two tests to share on. The first one is Daniel 11 32. Daniel 11 32. Then Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians 2, verse 10. Daniel eleven thirty-two 32 reads, Those who do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know and you may want to underline that word, no. Their God shall be strong, underline the word strong, and carry out great exploits. This is from the New King James Version. Those who do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt with flattery, but the people who know their God shall be strong. And carry out great exploits. The second reading, Ephesians 2 then reads, For we are God's handiwork. We are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. To do good works. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. Amen. Now looking at this two scriptures, I've tried to put them together under three main headings. Break them into three main areas. The first one is knowledge. The people who know they are God. The second one is strength. Those who know their God shall be strong. And the third point is exploits or great exploits. So we're looking at knowledge, we're looking at strength, and we're looking at exploits. When you look at the second scripture, I can also get the same thing there. It says that for we are God's handiwork. That is what we are. That is the information available to us. That is what God wants us to know. That we are God's handiwork. And that is knowledge. The kind of information God wants us to know. Created in Christ, who is the source of our strength. Created in Christ, who is the source of our strength. To do good works, to do exploits, to do great things. So here again, we see in the two scriptures, knowledge, strength, and exploits, or good works. Knowledge, strength, and great exploits. Now what is it that will bring 
capacity to do great exploits. And I believe at the end of the day, we, our focus is on the end product, which is exploit. But to get to that point, we have to reverse the equation. We have to go back to the source. It says that the people who knows, who knows. And so your strength is firmly rooted on your knowledge, the kind of information that you have. Without the requisite, appropriate knowledge, your strength is feeble. You would only know your strength when the challenges of the times, when situations arise, then you will know you are strong. When there are no turbulence, you may think that you are strong enough. But when situations begin to confront your capacity, then you will know whether you are strong or not. But the assurance given us by scripture is that those who know their God, once you know your God, you have been catapulted from the point of weakness to the realms of strength. And what is it that the Bible talks about when it says, no God? Is it just believing in God? The Bible says that even demons believe there is God and they shudder. So it is not enough just to know God. But what is it about God that you know? What is it about God that we know? Some of them are basic, and I'll just quickly run through some of them, and then we'll zoom into what I really want to focus. It's important we know that God is God. He's sovereign. He's able to do what he says he would do. In fact, the Bible says that God is able to exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think of. That is the God we serve. The God of possibilities. The God who is able to say, let there be and there is. This morning, may the Lord speak into your situation. Amen. I want a better amen to that. Amen. I do not want any word from my lips to fall in vain. Let every declaration find place in your life. And I'm saying that let the word of the Lord come to you mightily that every word that has been spoken concerning your life should come to pass in Jesus' name. Let the Lord watch over his word. God is sovereign. God is capable. In fact, his capacity enables him to speak with audacity that I know the plans that I think towards you a plan to give you hope, a future, and an expected end. So when you know God, your future is secured. We know him as a forgiving God, a God who forgives our sins, who is able to say we are sons. A God who, has, who is able to do what he says he will do. A God who will not do what he says he will not do. He says... The Lord will not lie. And so he will not lie. Whatever he said, he will stick to it. Has he given you a prophetic word? Has he given you an assurance? He will watch over it. He will not forsake us. He will not leave us. And this word, the prophecy that came says that I'm with you. God was establishing his sonship. And these are things I'll be talking about today. Let me say that God is with you. The people that know their God shall be strong. Your knowledge of God, how you see God will determine your strength. Some of us see God as some wicked old man out there sitting on top of his roof looking for one who has seen to strike a rock, a rod. And so we are always conscious of some God who is so wicked, who opens the earth for people to fall in and closes on them. Yes, God is a God of judgment, but beyond that, God is a good God. It's a caring, loving God. God who will not want us to remain in weakness, in sin and iniquity, but God who wants to build us up. These are some of the things that God has made himself known to us. But you see, beyond that, Paul made a statement that I want, that I may know Christ, that I may know God, that I may know the Holy Spirit, that I may know him. One, and the power of his resurrection. What is that mystery? What is it about the resurrection that we need to know? You see, 
it is all right to know about God. But beyond that, what brings the difference is your knowledge of Christ. I hope you would understand what I'm saying very soon. You see, almost all religions believe there is God. I mean, Muslims, Hindus, even pagans and those who don't believe. They believe they're God. Or the Kuma, they believe God is powerful. God is able. They believe God is everywhere. They have that kind of faith. But there's something that is a mystery. And your knowledge of that will determine your strength. Will mark you out from other people. Will mark you out from other religions. And that is your knowledge of what God has done in Christ. And Paul says that this is the mystery that was hidden even from prophets of old. And was only revealed to his apostles. So even Moses, the Aaron's, the Elijah's, name them did not get this mystery. This is a mystery that was only revealed to the apostles of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The apostles and the prophets of Jesus Christ. So the mystery of Christ, that which Daniel foresaw and predicted that in the last days, knowledge shall increase and that in the last days, deception will overflow. People will be flattered. There will be all kinds of false information false hope people will be deceived people will be flattered but in those days those who know they are god Hallelujah. that is the knowledge we want to talk about this morning the knowledge of the resurrection the knowledge of christ you see because the first adam fell and then jesus god came in and pacified all those things we have a thinking that jesus was an afterthought and that because adam fell that is why jesus came no 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 in fact before adam was even created bible says that the lamp was slain so it, it is not because adam fell that is why jesus came before the foundation of the earth jesus agenda was already on the table god had in mind that a time was going to come where his only begotten son will come to achieve a goal. But you see, in coming to achieve the goal, certain things had happened over time and he needed to deal with those things. Whether those things happened or not, Jesus would have still come. But in his coming, he needed to deal with certain things that had happened after creation. I'm saying that the issue about you as a Christian, the issue about the church, that knowledge, that information that will cause us to be strong was in the heart of God, was in the mind of God, even before creation. When, when Jesus, Jesus asked the disciples, which is the theme for this year, the word do men say, I am. And then some said, you are the John the Baptist, you are the prophet, you are this, you are that, and then he asked them, who do you say I am? And then Peter said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. Some of us think that that was just a raw statement. No. That is the basis of Christianity. Now, when Peter said that, Jesus said, this has not been revealed to you by flesh and blood. This is a mystery. This is something that was hidden. This is something that was not known to Moses, was not known to any of the prophets, not to Jeremiah, not to Isaiah. But, but this, this was, was a revelation that was made known only to the apostles. The revelation of who Jesus actually is. The revelation of Christ as the Messiah. Now, now that, that revelation, revelation of, Christ of Christ as the Messiah, as the Messiah is, is an understanding of the, of the humanity of Jesus Christ. Because, because the, the Old Testament knew that a prophet was going to come up. A prophet was going to arise in the order of Moses. And so they knew that God was going to raise a human being. And so when Peter said that you are the Christ, Peter was affirming the humanity of Jesus Christ. Peter was saying that, yes, you standing before us, you are a human being who has been anointed. You are the Christ. But beyond that, he also made another statement that you are, you the, are the son of, of the living God. God. That statement son, son it's, it's not, not sanctioned as, as a biological terminology, but, but sanctioned as, as her 
as someone who is in joint union with the Father, is a divine technology. It's a technology that depicts divinity, an offspring of the Father, an offspring of the Father. That is sonship. And we often, uh, and you will know that human beings will give birth to human beings, right? Dogs will give birth to dog. Uh, um, coconut will produce coconut. In fact, if you see mango producing cassava, then there's a problem. And the, and same, the same way, way you see, see a snake giving birth to, to lions. lions. <laughs> that, that snake is from Jupiter. But you see, so when God, when the Bible says that the Son of God, it is trying to say that the offspring of God, so that who is the Son is divine. So Peter was having a revelation of Jesus' full humanity and full divinity. This was something that even the Jeremiah didn't know. That God was going to become fully man, fully, fully divine. divine. And, and this, this revelation, revelation of Christ, Christ is what, what Jesus, Jesus said, said, this has not been revealed to you by flesh and blood. And upon this understanding, upon this revelation, upon this insight, this knowledge of me as human, as divine, as one that has been anointed, and as one that is divine, is the basis upon which the church shall be built. And so, everybody who, who do not, do not understand, understand this revelation, revelation is not part of the church. It is, it is not when you come to Pentecost that, that, that you belong to the church. church. Or when you go to Methodist or Pentecost or Catholic. No, 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 no. That is more of an association, a movement. But your knowledge of Christ, your understanding of Christ, your knowing that Jesus who came is fully God and fully man. And that He's able to understand our humanity. He's able to be our high priest. Because he needed to become that so that he could sacrifice. So that he could do an assignment. Now, before Adam fell, I believe that Satan had already fallen. There was sin. There was disobedience. And because there was sin, there was disobedience. And Satan had taken dominion over the earth and was ruling. In fact, when Jesus came, he acknowledged that the prince of this world is coming, but none of his is in me. It was important, therefore, that God became man to be able to live on this earth and fight a human battle. And that is why he needed to become the anointed son. The people that know their God. The knowledge. And so, when Jesus came on earth, it was important he had to become human so that he would deal with human issues. And then he had to be lifted up on the cross so that he would deal with the realms of the high places. And the Bible says that when he was lifted on the cross, he made a public show, a public spectacle of the enemy. So when he was lifted up, another battle was taking place in the realms of the spiritual, in the realms of the air, the powers of the air. So on the cross, Jesus disarmed Satan who was ruling the earth. But you see, that was not the end. In order for, you know, before the creation of man, or before man's sin, and then man's sin that eventually gave ownership of this world to two main powers, two main principalities, two main spirits, let me put it that way, who the Bible refers to as enemies of Christ. The spirit of the devil and the spirit of death. The Bible says that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. So it was important that Jesus took upon himself a nature that would be able to deal with human issues. So he came on earth. But it didn't have to end there. He needed to go into the world of the dead. But God if he had to come in the nature of God, he couldn't die. So he needed to become fully man so that blood could be shed so that he could also die. And so Jesus, when he was on earth, had to deal with the devil who was on this earth. And then he also needed to go into the world of the dead. 
And to be able to go into the world of the living, of human, he had to become human. So to be able to go also into the world of the dead, he needed to die. And the good news is that when he was buried and died in the grave, he took hold of the power of darkness. And death had to lose his hold. So you see, Jesus is both Jesus is both Why are you taking my plan? <laughs> Let's not, don't worry. But it's okay if, if once you've moved it. Alpha, Alpha, Ghana, everywhere there's sun, isn't it? Alright, so I'm saying that it was important that Jesus took authority over the world of the living and the world of the dead. And that is why he had to come as human. So that understanding by Peter that you are the anointed one was an understanding that God had anointed Jesus to be Lord of the living and the Lord of the dead. And that is why even in the grave, Jesus is still Lord. And, and you need to understand this when we come to the exploits. So even those by Adam's works, Satan and death had control. But when somebody is in Christ, Satan and death has no power over such people. Because Jesus became man to deal with those two issues. But you see, he needed to remain God to be able to do the next phase of things, which I'm about to talk about. The people that have this knowledge shall do exploits. Knowing who God is. Knowing what the resurrection has done. You see, when Jesus came on earth, became human, he now had ability to deal with human issues. And so as long as we remain human, there's nothing Jesus cannot do. In fact, even when you are in love with a girl, you can tell him. He understands what love is. Oh yeah, when some girl is letting your heart jump, jump, jump. Go to Jesus and say, oh God, have mercy on me. This girl is disturbing me. He was tempted in every way yet without sin. So he understands it. He was able to overcome. And so he knows how to help those who are going through that. He understands what it means to be hungry. He understands what it means to be unwell. He understands what it means to be tired. He understands all those things. And so whatever you're going through, Jesus has an answer. Angels do not. Angels do not understand. Believe you me, if it was angels who were leading us, would have been in trouble. Just look at, look at uh, Gabriel. Eh? You go to, what's his name, the old man? Zachariah. And Zachariah says, oh, I'm, I'm a, an old man. How can this be done? You say, you because you doubted me, you are going to be dumb. You can imagine those of us who have been dumb by now. Those of you who have doubted God, God says you shall prosper. You say, oh, how? God says you shall be healed. You say, oh, how? All of us would have been, mm, 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 come to church and we'll be praising God. Mm, 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 mm. But Jesus became human so that he would understand our feeble nature. The people that know their God shall work strong and shall do exploit. So Jesus became human. But you see, in the resurrection, Something happened. Because he had authority over the living and the dead, when Jesus came back from the life and from the dead, he carried with him a new eternal nature which humanity is capable of carrying. An eternal nature, an eternal unchanging nature. So Jesus until he's coming to the earth was purely divine in fact the bible refers to him as the word he was divine he was god but when he came on earth and took upon himself the human nature and resurrected now he's been given a new nature a new assignment where he will continue to operate at the right hand of god until all his enemies Will be put under his feet then he'll hand over the kingdom and then they'll all take their original position but until that happens 
Jesus birth and resurrection has created an opportunity for those in him to carry on his very nature and what is that nature those who know they are God shall do expert your knowledge would to a very large extent explain who you are will, will explain your understanding of your very nature and I have been recently been trying to share this thought this revelation I believe the Lord is giving me so strongly you know for some time we've all been teaching that God doesn't share certain things right we have what we call the communicable and non-communicable for instance we share that God is omnipresent we are not true or false yes God is all-powerful we are not God is immortal we are mortal that was our thinking but that is not completely true that is not completely true the people who knows their God would work strong and do exploits what is it that we need to know you see as Bible says as many as believed in him he gave them power to become children children not born of the flesh but children born of the spirit and the Bible says that the spirit or the flesh begats the flesh or the flesh give birth to the flesh and the spirit gives birth to the spirit so when you are born again it is the Holy Spirit who has conceived you and has given birth to you so your new born or new birth experience is a completely new creation something that never existed before Adam when Adam was created Adam was created from the earth so everything about Adam was earthly but when Jesus came he created a new world like Adam but this time the Adam that was created was not from the earth the Adam that was created was from above and the Bible talks of second Adam second Adam so when you are in Christ you are born again and that born again experience makes you a new creation different from Adam and so yes you carry in you the old Adam nature which is of the flesh which is this body which is this last which is this feeling but when you are born again you carry in you a new personality of the second Adam and that new personality is the personality of sonship and and I've been, I was explaining somewhere that you see the women in this church don't worry yourself about changing the title son don't call yourself daughter of God God doesn't have daughters <laughs> don't worry yourself to call yourself daughter because son is not sex son has to do with offspring when the Bible says that as many as believe he gave their power to become the children it's children birth not out of flesh not out of male and female organs no but you are born by the spirit and God has no sex for heaven's sake God is not a man nor is he a woman in fact God is woman man or your bad time papa or your job and so when you are born again your body is sexed being male or female but your spirit is unsexed your spirit is a son your spirit is an offspring and this is what makes you who you are now listen carefully the people that knows they are God the people who know who they are shall do exploit as long as you remain human you will do the works of human you'll be limited by human standards you'll be limited by human ability You'll be limited by human shortcomings. As long as you live fully human, you cannot go beyond what every human can do. Your exploits will be limited by your human capacity. But once you have an understanding that you are a duopoly, you are 
a double personality once you are in Christ. You are two in one. You are human and you are divine. Once you understand that, yes, you have the body which is from Adam, but you have another body the Bible refers to as the inner man, the spirit man. Once you understand that you also have that body, which is not earthly, in fact, this body which makes you black or male or female will be left on this earth, will be buried and it will rot. But your real body, that which makes you who you are, that which gives you the strength to do exploit, that which makes you strong, is your spirit man. And that spirit man in you, that personality in you, is God. You know, sometimes we pray that fill us, Holy Spirit. And then you look up. You are looking for the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. No, Holy Ghost, come. You should come from where? Holy Ghost, move. Move where? In fact, the Holy, God doesn't move. God doesn't walk. Even though the Bible talks about he walked in the cool of the day. God doesn't walk. He doesn't need to move. He's not a man who needs to take steps. He doesn't need to come where you are because he's already there. He's already there. He, he, oh, you see, there's something we call anthropomorphism, which has to do with using human terminologies to explain God. It doesn't make God that. And so, in as much as God, <laughs> God is God, and I, I use this simple illustration. Some of us think that the Bible says God is on the throne, so truly God is seated on the throne. He's not sitting on any throne. And immediately you talk about throne, you are thinking about some two chairs. And then God is seated like that, so God has a bums, a, a, a back, he has a leg. The Bible says the earth is his footstool and the heavens is throne. So you begin to picture God with, with, with buttocks sitting on top of the throne. And then long legs on the ground. No. <laughs> and I say that the same God who sits up there with his leg on the throne has the whole world in his hands. So how can God, whose leg is on the ground, also has the world only in his only palm, his hands? God is bigger than we can imagine. And you see, this God that we're talking about, those who know their God, and please get this clearly to me. When you accept Christ and you are born again, your spirit that is born again is like God. In fact, it's not like, it's same. Adam was created like God. Adam was made in the image of God. But when you are born again, the spirit in you is not like God. The spirit in you is the same spirit. So you carry in your humanity divinity. And that divinity is the same as God. So your spirit man is God. And that is why when others are saying you are not omnipresent, they don't understand it. Bible says we are seated here, but we are seated with Christ. True of us. In the heavenly place. So your, your physical body is here, but that is not you. This one is Yura. Your real self is your spirit man. And that's personality that makes you who you are. Is in Christ. And Christ is in Nigeria, in Togo, in Botswana, in Ivory Coast. So when you go to Ivory Coast, you will see Christ there. You will see me, Kasiakwa, too, there. I am in Christ. We are united with Christ. And so I am not just a human being, I am a walking divinity. Now, when you begin to see what Christ has done, what the resurrection, I told you by stating that. The resurrection has allowed Jesus to take upon a new nature which humanity can also take upon themselves to bring identity, to bring recognition. You see, the spirit in you is the same spirit. You have been born by the same spirit. So what is in you is not your mother's spirit. It's the spirit of God. The same as the Holy Ghost. So, and, and please note this. The Holy Spirit does not increase or decrease. So when you say Holy Ghost, shame my mommy to me, Jina, my name is Oh, you see, again, 
Bible uses some terminology, so we, 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 we get confused. Say that Jesus said, power has gone out of me. So we think that the Holy Spirit increases and decreases. When we fast, then the Holy Spirit becomes more powerful. When we are not fasting, the Holy Spirit becomes less powerful. You see, so every time the Holy Spirit, we need to fire, 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 then the Holy Ghost will become charged. No. The, Holy, the Spirit in you is the same. He will not increase whether you fast or you don't fast. He is who he is. The problem is your body. So when the Bible talks about being filled with the Spirit, it's not about pouring. Those are just terminology. When the Bible says being filled with the Spirit, it's talking about allowing your spirit man to take charge of your human body. Where your reasoning is under control, your thinking is under control, he has filled you. But the Spirit in you is the same Spirit. And your faith will determine who you are. So when I meet somebody and I look at him with a human eye and I approach him as a human being, I'll get the result of a human being. But when I see someone and I approach him as divinity in humanity, I approach him as God, I get the result of God. Those who knows their God shall do exploits. Now, if that is the case, this is a mystery that God has hidden. That God is going to produce a group of people he refers to as the church. Who will carry an incomparably great power in their bosom. So as you walk, as you walk on the campus of UCC, have it at the back of your mind that you have a choice to live either according to your flesh, Respond to your flesh. Respond to your desires. Respond to your unbelief. Respond to your doubt. Respond to your fears. Respond to your lack. And operate like a human being. Enjoy the fruits of a human being. Or you respond to your spirit man. Who is God. To respond to him by faith. By confidence. Assurance. Hope. Goodness. Now once you begin to live by the spirit. Bible says you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. You are a walking duopoly. And you have a choice to walk by the spirit. And that is why Paul wanted to understand the resurrection power. When Jesus came out of the dead, he took upon his body a body that will never die. A body that is eternal. A body that is forever. And that is the same spirit that is in us. In fact, the Bible says we do not know how we'll be like, but when he comes, just as he is, we shall be like him. So, your spirit man, we don't know whether he's green, he's blue, we don't know. What we know is that your spirit man is like God. Wherever God is, he is. In fact, you do not die. The Bible says that as many as believe in him shall have eternal life. And the prophecy this morning was talking about eternal life. And so, whereas non-believers will die, we don't die. Once you are in Christ, you, do, you only fall asleep. God calls you to continue the journey somewhere. So when you go to a mortuary and there are two people, an unbeliever and a believer, they are not the same. The believer is continuing his life to eternity. We are eternal beings. We are not mortal beings. And that's why Jesus said that he that believes in me shall not die. And even if he dies, shall be resurrected. Now, when you understand who you are now, then you begin to operate like God. You begin to operate with divinity. You begin to operate with excellence and goodness. God is a creative God. And so whilst everybody is selling sachet water, those are the works of human beings. You must begin to move from the realms of not just knowing your spirituality, but being creative as God. Whilst everybody is selling maybe sachet water, with, 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 um, in a particular size, you must have the capacity to add on, to create something new, to bring something that will solve a problem. And that is what God is. God is a creator. He created the universe. God is a God of diversity. He's able to bring things which are not into being. He sees things which are not. May God this morning open your understanding. Amen. So that when you go out there to the world, your boss will marvel 
at the wisdom and the understanding that you operate with. You sit at board meetings and they wonder, where is your wisdom coming from? And they will not understand, but you will know that because you know that you are not a human being, but you are a human divinity. You begin to move, when the questions have, be, have been asked, you move away from the mind of the flesh and you move into the spirit and the spirit will connect with your body and you begin to receive ideas that human beings cannot understand. As people of God, we must do exploits. We must operate beyond what other people operate. We must go beyond the natural. So I'm talking about the wisdom of this new age, the mystery that comes from knowledge of God. I'm saying that your knowledge, your capacity, your wisdom, your understanding goes beyond ordinary human being. You would only operate as an ordinary human being when you are always sourcing from your brains, when you're always sourcing from your heart, when you're always sourcing from your knowledge. But when in addition from the source of your knowledge, you also add up the source from your spirit man. When you begin to connect to your spirit man, ideas will begin to flow you never imagined. Strategies will begin to come. Plans will begin to come. You'll be in your bed and God will just give you ideas and plans and strategies. May the Lord mark you out differently. May the Lord set you apart. And God believes in excellence. One of the fruit of the spirit is goodness. To be good. And that has to do with excellence. Where everything you do, you do not settle for mediocrity. And it's important that as people who know they are God, we excel in goodness. We excel in being the best. Do not settle for lower things. Look at God. Look at his creativity. Look at his ingenuity. Look at his excellence. Look at how marvelous God is. And begin to dream big. If your dreams do not scare you, then you are human. Then you are operating like a man. You must begin to operate like God. You must begin to have dreams that are beyond your understanding and pray them through. When others are adding 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 4 plus 10, you add 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 10 and you add Kabo. And when you add 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus Kabo, you will not operate like a human being. Your business will not operate like a human being. Your exams will not be like a human being. May God cause you. We have walked, may God cause you to operate like God. We have walked like humans for too long. And I can tell you that if you understand your divinity, you can, if a before can fly, as they claim, to a brochure, you don't need to fly. You're already there. Your spirit man is already there. All you need to do is to make a declaration by faith. And your spirit man will activate that word. We can stand here and operate the Jubilee House. We can command and things will begin to come in the nation. That is the authority of the spirit man. The people who know their God shall work strong and do exploits. As you leave this meeting, go and operate like a divine personality. As you leave this meeting, let mountains become level ground. For it is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit. As you go out of this place, knowing that you do not only know God, but you also know who you are in Christ. And I'm saying that that becomes your strength, your capacity. It marks you out different from other people. It makes you strong because your strength is not from human ability. Your strength is from your spiritual understanding of who you actually are. Is. It's very easy to believe you're a human being. But as I talk to you, I know you are finding it so difficult to believe you are divinity. In fact, it's a sin to doubt what I'm saying. <laughs> because that is unbelief. You are a son of God. Like Jesus, who is the son of God. Sonship, not out of sex, but out of position. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are put your name there, you are you are the son of the living God and being the son of the living God, you carry in you 
the very nature of Christ. So if Christ was able to walk on water, may God grant you grace to be able to walk on your own water. If Christ was able to speak to the storms of life, be still. May you also have the capacity to speak to your circumstances, speak to your situation, speak to your future marriage, speak to your relationship, speak to everything around you. That let them be still. And don't speak like man. Speak like your father. A lion will roar. A dog will bark. You are a child of the Lord. May you have the capacity to tender to speak with authority to cause things which are not to come into being so as you move out of this university wherever you go where does death bring life because of the resurrection that is in you may nothing die in your hands rise to your feet may nothing die in your hands let businesses which are dying once you take over the management of that company may christ take over that company when you are in parliament you are you are in any organization where there is death remember you are not a dead being you are a living being may god give you grace to bring life wherever you go where when you are made in charge of an organization pensa a local assembly no matter how dead that congregation is may your divinity be aroused and may you have capacity in all aspects of life i want you to raise your hands as i pray with you God is in me it is greater than that of the world is greater Seven minutes. I'm left with just about 10 13 minutes. Now, listen go and be like God. Whether you are a male or a female, I've told you that sonship is not about sex, it's about the spirit man in you. If there are demons in your family, don't go fighting them. God doesn't fight demons, you are bigger than the demons. So when you see witches, don't spend 10 hours binding and destroying demons. It's a waste of time. It is like an ant that you stepped on and you spend one hour stepping on the same ant. It is dead long ago. As you walk on the aisles of UCC, let God walk on the aisles of UCC. All you have to do is to make a declaration that let the powers of darkness be bound and they are bound and go ahead and do whatever you want to do. If you want to possess a place, just take hold of the powers that are there. Don't spend one hour, all night, one hour praying against demons, praying against principalities because you are a living being. Whatever the enemy gives you, just touch it and your hands are blessed. Oh church, may your divinity be aroused. Oh church, may your humanity be overwhelmed by your divinity. Now I know that because you are still in humanity, your human weaknesses will come. And just as you operate as a human being, that's okay, I understand. God understands that once the flesh is dead, you will operate like the flesh sometimes. But sir, madam, don't only operate like a human being. If you want to operate like a human being from time to time, fine. But just as you can operate like a human being, there are times you must operate like God. Do not have an unbalanced scale. Operate like God, operate like man. Father, 
with your hands of your children lifted. The people who know their God as to what God has done, they will be strong. All those who felt they belong to the trodden, they, they are the tail and not the head. Today I change their thinking. I change their understanding. I change a feeling that they have as being nobody. And I resurrect their divinity in their hearts. And I pray that the spirit of creativity, the spirit of excellence, the spirit of goodness will be aroused in them like God. That they will begin to have ideas and plans and things which are not. They will have capacity to bring them into being. Once they go anywhere, may they be among the best. Father, let not their humanity take charge. Let the spirit man take charge. You said if we walk after the spirit, we will not be overcome by the flesh. Oh God, arise in our midst. Oh God, give us the grace to become spirit filled. Let the Holy Ghost in us take control of our feeble body, our weak minds, our unbeliefs, our doubts, our questions, oh God. Let the Holy Ghost take over like Paul so we can say, I am coming in the fullness of God's grace. Like Paul, we can say that I came not with wise or persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit. Oh God, release the capacity for your people to demonstrate. And in every aspect where doctors cannot operate upon somebody, when your people step into the operation room, they will see beyond human mind. They will have the mind of the spirit. They will see beyond the physical. Then they will have answers that even other doctors and specialists will not have. This is our portion. Let the spirit of excellence take over everybody here. And Father, I pray that everybody here would operate in their divinity. Everybody. Just as we have operated in our humanity from today, let us also, and even the more, operate in our divinity. Church, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord lift you up. May the Lord elevate your faith and conviction and cause you to understand who you are. May the Lord be with you now and forevermore.